it's difficult to simply evaluate the SD3 medium base model. It may be due to insufficient training or the cost of isolating NSFW content, it performs poorly in understanding human anatomy. However, when it comes to understanding and applying complex prompts and directly generating high-quality large images, the SD3 medium base model far surpasses SD1.5 and SDXL. In this video, I will lead you through an in-depth analysis of each node and parameter comparison in the SD3 Comfy UI workflow to maximize the strengths and fully extract the value of this model. Load the base workflow provided by the official SD3 release and change both the checkpoint and clip model to local files. For better demonstration, I will remove the character keyword from the prompt to draw a real person. Click Run, wait a moment, and the image will be generated. We will use this workflow as a basis for our explanation. There are several SD3 specific nodes inside. First, look at this model sampling SD3 node, the parameter is Shift and the default value is 3. Theoretically, the higher the value, the more it focuses on structure the lower the value, the more it focuses on details. The range of 1 to 15 can be used, but I generally choose between 2 and 6. I change the value to 6, add a preview image node. Click Run, wait a while, and the result comes out. Compared to the previous result, except for the character's mouth slightly open, the rest of the picture is almost the same. Now, let's change the value back to the default 3. Now, look at these conditioning nodes connected to the negative prompt. This complex string of nodes is just to ensure that the negative prompt only works in the first 10%. Let's try disabling them and see the effect. Although the overall structure of the picture does not change much, the character becomes somewhat unrealistic. For better results, do not skimp on this step. I will re-enable these nodes. Now, let's look at some sampler parameters. SD3 requires a low CFG value, otherwise, the image will be overexposed. I will use the XY node to compare it for you. Create a new XY plot node in the blank area, then add the XY input, CFG scale node. Set the CFG range from 2 to 7 with 0.5 increments. and add a k-sampler, efficient, node. Connecting the xy node to this node script port and complete the other connections. Remember to update the parameters in this node to match the previous case sampler. Change the iteration steps to 28. Ignore CFG as it is script input for now. And change the sampler to the previous DPMPP underscore 2M with SGM underscore uniform. Add a preview image node. Then disable the previous sampler and its following nodes. Click Run. This time, it will generate 11 images, which will take some time. I will speed up the process. The results are out, right-click to open the image. Zoom in and look. With CFG at 2, the image is acceptable. and the images from 3 to 4.5 are pretty good. Personally, I like the result at 3.5 the most. At 5, overexposure starts to appear, and the higher it goes, the worse the effect. By 7, the image is already abnormal. Of course, this also relates to resolution and prompts, but the general range is about the same, and anything above 6 is basically unusable. Now let's compare sampling methods. Add an XY input, sampler slash scheduler node.
change the number to 5, and set the comparison items to sampler and scheduler. Then choose the official default DPMPP underscore 2M plus SGM underscore uniform. Our old friend DPMPP underscore 2M plus Keras. The simplest Euler plus normal. And two other SD3 effective options Euler plus SGM underscore uniform and Uni underscore PC plus SGM underscore uniform. Change the CFG in the sampler to the previously best 3.5. Click Run, and Speed Up. Right-click to open the image. And DPMPP underscore 2M with Keras performs poorly, proving it is not suitable for SD3. The rest of the images are good. Besides these combinations, DPM Adaptive and Uni underscore PC underscore BH2 with SGM underscore Uniform are also great, you can try them. The iteration steps relate to the convergence speed of the sampling method, and DPMPP underscore 2M takes about 30 steps. Add an XY input, steps node. Set the steps from 10 to 50, with an increment of 5, generating 9 images. Speed up the run, right-click to open and view the large image. At 10 steps, the image is already acceptable, but it lacks rich details. Continuing, 25 to 30 steps give the best effect, so the official 28 steps are spot on. As theory suggests, adding more steps won't change the image much. Returning to the workflow. Disable these XY-related nodes. Enable the original workflow nodes. And change CFG to 3.5. Now, let's look at the image size. SD3 requires dimensions to be multiples of 64, but to get good images, specific sizes should be chosen. For instance, starting with SDXL, the default size of 1024 times 1024 is good. For horizontal images, use 1344 by 768, which nicely showcases landscapes. Modify the prompt. Click Run and Speed Up to see the result. Very nice, sunlight streams through the trees, illuminating the deer playing by the creek. In tests, I found that SD3 can directly output images up to 1728 by 1024 in size. I'll run it for you to see. The image is more detailed, and even the fine fur on the deer can be clearly seen. For a vertical image, the best size is 768 times 1344. I'll change the prompt to a portrait. Speed up and see the result. It performs well. The face is clear. And the clothing details are realistic. Even the often criticized hands are good. That concludes the content on the base workflow. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or message me. Now, let's look at another complex prompt workflow provided by the official. First, change the model to the local one. And set CFG to 3.5. Now, let's look at this prompt node, which has a total of three boxes with prompts for clip underscore L, clip underscore G, and T5XXL, respectively. This corresponds to the three encoders we loaded earlier. If T5 is not loaded, the prompt in the third box is useless. Let's analyze the official writing. The inputs for clip underscore G and clip underscore L are the same, detailing the background colors and atmosphere of the scene without including the main character, while T5XXL specifically defines the character's hair facial features, clothing, 
and overall art style. Now, I will write two segments similarly, depicting human's best friend the husky. First, define the background as a steampunk world with gears, pipes, machinery, and airships, primarily in brown and metallic tones. Put this into clip underscore L and clip underscore G. Although clip underscore L has limited input length, it doesn't matter much. Next, describe the subject in detail, a husky in complex armor, with goggles on its head and SD written on its chest. The overall style is a mix of realism and steampunk, rugged and adventurous, while ensuring detailed accuracy. Place this in T5XXL. Click Run. And a steampunk husky with a determined expression is born. Now, I will do some experiments to help you better understand the functions of different clips. Add another preview image node. First remove the clip underscore L prompt. Click Run. And see the result. The husky is fine. But the background is not. It did not generate the steampunk world background according to clip underscore G but created a forest snow background instead. Similarly, remove clip underscore G. The result is almost the same, losing the defined background. It seems only T5XXL took effect. Let's leave clip underscore G and clip underscore L empty and add their prompts to T5XXL. Now to place the harder to generate parts, originally in T5XXL, at the front. See the result? This time, both the background and husky are steampunk but it's not as detailed as the initial version. As mentioned before, when the content in the three prompt boxes is consistent, the best picture quality is achieved. Copy the T5XXL prompt to the other two boxes. Add a preview image node. Click Run, and see the result. The effect is better than a single one but not significantly different from the separate ones. What do you think? Now, let's use this complete prompt for clip underscore G and clip underscore L only, excluding T5XXL, as low VRAM machines often can't load T5. Run it and see. The image quality is good. The husky and background are both steampunk, but the SD on the husky's chest is missing. The official paper states that using only clip underscore L and clip underscore G has limited impact on image quality, but greatly affects the ability to generate literal text. By now, I believe everyone understands how to separate prompts for different clips. But if I use a single prompt box like in the basic workflow, will the effect be much worse? Not really. Add a regular prompt box. Write the complete prompt. Disable the three prompt nodes. Add another preview image node. And click Run. The result shows that the difference is minimal compared to the separated prompts, so you can take this shortcut in daily use. The parameter explanation ends here. Now, let me share a few interesting SD3 tips. One is the trending on ArtStation positive and negative quality prompts shared by DataCTE. Here are some images comparing the use before and after. It seems to help a bit. Another is using the 4chan slash files slash prompt structure and prompts to generate more normal full body images. Remember to connect your prompt with underscores to simulate a file name. Comparing the results shows some changes, but nothing spectacular. Alright, that's all for this video. See you next time.